Hey everyone, today we are with uh, Paul Johnson, aka Otaking, on the internet. And uh, <laughs> could you present yourself like in a, in a few words and what you do? I'm a 2D frame by frame traditional animator. I use TV paint and I'm probably best known for that uh, TIE Fighter animation, the Star Wars animation on YouTube. Um, that I think that was probably my biggest, yeah. my biggest hit. <laughs> Eight or nine million view, views, uh, I could remember. Yeah, I think it's coming up on, on nine million, maybe, yeah. How did you start making animation? Was it like years and years ago? Or? Even when I was at school, I wanted to do animation, but there was there were no laptops back then. There wasn't even any internet or anything. So the the only way you could do animation was if you know you went to some college that had an animation course or something, um, with you know where you you draw it frame yeah. frame by frame on bits of paper and then film it with a you know a camera stop motion kind of like in the old Disney days. And um, obviously it was super prohibitive and um, I, there were no colleges in my area doing that kind of thing. So I just figured it's something you watch on TV animation. It's not something that you can ever do yourself. Yeah. And um, then years later, obviously you, you started to see like animation software appearing that you could just download and use on, on your your terrible <laughs> low spec PC, which which I did. And um, yeah, I think the first the first thing I ever animated was um, it was for an indie game back in about 2004 called The White Chamber, which I did when I was at university. And um, yeah, so I did the art and animation for that. It looks really bad now. If you go back and look at it, it looks really, really bad now. But it, it kind of got me started and um, I just kind of kept on animating in my free time from then on. So you, you didn't learn like at school, it was only by yourself? Um yeah, there was no there were no classes or anything for it, so I, I had to I had to learn myself, which um you can kind of see if you look at some of my stuff, like I can do three hundred and sixty degree panning shot of like a space battle with flames and explosions and everything. I can do all of that, but I can't animate someone walking, so <laughs> the fundamentals are terrible. All of the stuff that you're supposed to learn first and get down, I just didn't. So right now I'm really working on those, trying to get the, the character the character acting. Explosions are good, but you need to be able to animate people walking, I think. Yeah, because the, the main uh, characteristic of, of uh, your work is like uh, spaceships and mecha and battles. So yeah, you were a big yeah. fan of that, yeah? <laughs> mm, oh, yeah, definitely. When I was, um, I think that that's kind of, it's kind of a blessing and a curse. Because when I was growing up, um, I didn't know it was Japanese at the time, but we I, all the stuff I liked on TV was, you know, cartoons like Thundercats and Cities of Gold. And um, I saw I saw some Ghibli films dubbed into English and, and didn't know that they were Japanese. And, the, you know, later on, I found out that that was all anime. And um, so I started getting into anime, but I got into the really high budget kind of 1980s you know, Akira, uh, Venus Wars, Project Echo, all yeah. these like these things that were super high budget, and so they influenced me, and that that's the style that I want to do. But obviously, that usually took a huge team of people <laughs> back when Japan had infinite money because it was the economic bubble. So yeah, that's the style that I want to do. But obviously, it takes it takes ages because I'm trying to get all of that airbrushing in and all of like the multi-tone shading and all the little details on all the mechanical parts and everything so maybe i shot myself in the foot i don't know we don't see that much of that kind of stuff now so you you are yeah. the one who does that so it's great no thank you thank you very much no i i hear that sometimes people saying um you know i i miss I miss, you know cowboy bebop and macros and all that kind of stuff and anime now doesn't have that kind of that kind of detail anymore yeah. in it and I, I wish I wish that kind of thing would come back and people say they like my stuff because it kind of has that that kind of feel and that's yeah that, that's really that's really intentional and but it, it takes me years to do one minute of animation yeah that's it because you, you work like <laughs> like you work alone and do you have some people around you that, uh, who want to work with you or you just like to work like 
one person and that's it yeah i prefer i prefer to work on my own it's, it's kind of crazy like i should i should get some people to help me with in betweening and coloring and things like that but um yeah i've done i've done enough kind of online collaboration things mm-hmm. to yeah. to know that you know when, as soon as it gets yeah yeah as soon as it's more than just yourself like people kind of you know that life gets in the way and they drop out or that like something else comes up that's more interesting for them and so it's at least you know you can count on yourself if you're a workaholic especially like i am yeah <laughs> and uh so you you take you took like it was four years to make a tie fighter that's it Four years, yeah. So that, that was seven minutes long and took uh, four years to make. But I was only working on that at the weekends because I had um, I had a full time job for an Australian company called Planet Fifty Five doing a, a animation called Prisoner Zero at the time. Okay. So yeah, I had to just like snatch spare moments wherever I could. So yeah, it was really it was four years, but it was um, it was weekends only whereas now I'm working I'm working all the time. I'm working like twelve uh, hours a day, just like nonstop. Yeah. So at the time, how did you manage the like you were animating something during the week and your stuff during the weekend? So it was like animation all around forever. So yeah, yeah. Um, for for Prisoner Zero, I did. Um, I wasn't actually animating though. I mainly did like um, concept designs. Like I did the character designs and and the ship designs and you know some of the environment designs and things like that. And then I moved on to backgrounds. Uh, because everyone else in the studio was using Toon Boom, but I was a TV paint guy, and I couldn't, I just couldn't get my head around. I, I'm terrible at learning new things, and you know, the TV paint is just, it just kind of clicks for me because it is, it's traditional, it's frame by frame, it's not, it's not vector. So it wasn't actually that bad. It wasn't like animation all day and then animation when you come home and then animation at the weekends. It was mainly backgrounds and then animation was like a welcome. A welcome kind of break at the weekends. How did you discover uh, TV Paint? It was like on the internet. Someone told you. So yeah, when when I started out animating, it was uh, I think I was using Animation Shop Pro. If you remember that, I don't know it. <laughs> it was oh, it's super. It's super old. You could you couldn't you could zoom in, but you couldn't move around the canvas okay. or anything. So it, it was like it was. Yeah, yeah, it was terrible. <laughs> it was terrible, but it was all I had. And so I realized that I really needed, you know, an actual proper proper piece of, piece of animation software. And so I looked around online and it was really hard to find. I, I was downloading and trying trial versions of, of everything that I could find. Somehow I came across TV Paint, um, which I think it was quite an old version yeah. at the time. It's like TV Paint 9 or something. And um, yeah, it just it did everything that I wanted it to do. It did it did absolutely. Yeah, if actually TV Paint does a lot more than I need, so I only use about one percent of TV Paint. <laughs> only this year have I well, last year did I start you know learning like the camera, the keyframe camera, and like the multiplane camera for the parallax and everything. So it it does it does crazy crazy things that I should probably take more advantage of. I think. And uh, yeah, you you also use uh, 3D stuff to. I think it was uh, Cinema 4D. Cinema 4D, yeah. For Tie Fighter, obviously it was it was just me, so it would have taken. It, it took four years, but yeah. it would have taken a <laughs> for decades. 40, <laughs> yeah. It would have taken 40 years to actually draw each Tie Fighter and keep all of the geometry like perfect and everything. So, yeah, I. I do really crude 3D models, like really, really, I'm not a 3D modeler, they're terrible, they're terrible models. I do really crude 3D models in Cinema 4D, and then I, I import those into TV Paint and just hand hand color them and hand detail them. It looks hand-drawn to a lot of people still. It's hand-shaded, it's hand-colored, and all of the details when the ship comes close to the screen, you know, all the little, little lines and panels and everything, they're all put in by hand on TV Paint. So. But, you know, the basic thing is just like a really basic 3D model. So, yeah, it kind of it kind of works. It kind of it seems to work out. Now you are on a, a new project for like uh, months. I, I don't know, uh, the Street, uh, Street Fighter project. So I'm, I'm actually working on on three things. So I'm working on Street Fighter to reset my brain from Street Fighter. At weekends, I'm remastering this R-Type 
animation that I'm doing. Yeah. If you remember the old the old side scrolling shoot game archetype. Yeah, yeah. And, and you want to uh, like make the characters move differently because you want to make your new skills in the film. Yeah, yeah. So our type I did for for Mashed, the Mashed channel on YouTube back in oh, when was it? 2016. Uh, yeah, I think uh, so. but I'm. I'm better now. I'm better at animating now. So what I'm doing is going, going back to that, and um, you know, using using all of that, uh, trying to get in the character acting and all that kind of thing. So I'm I'm redoing the character scenes in that. So I'm almost yeah. done on that. That should hopefully be released this month or next month, and then it's back to Street Fighter full time. So I'm doing Street Fighter and that, and I'm also have pre production on a, a mech film. Okay. like a full-length mech film that I want to do after Street Fighter. So Street Fighter is kind of the the run-through to get my skills down, my um, you know, my editing skills and my animation skills and character acting skills and all that, to get that down so that I can actually work on like a full, a full-length, like hour-long film. Um, okay, so hopefully next year or the year after, when whenever Street Fighter is done. So for now, there is no pictures or images from your full-length film online? Um, there, there's a few. It's basically Space Vietnam <laughs> with a lot of mecha anime. It's all, you know, kind of super robots and um, people shouting special moves and it's all very over the top and everything. And the one thing you don't see very often is kind of, you know, really stealthy tank combat kind of thing with realistic tactics and, you know, people, you know, having to conserve ammunition and and take like tactical roots, trees and branches caught in the legs and gears and things and have to get out and kind of fix all the stuff up and make sure all the supplies are in order and that kind of thing. So it could be really boring or it could be really interesting. Um, I'm going to make it really interesting though. So <laughs> it won't be boring. It won't be boring, guys. It'll be awesome. And yeah, it, it's uh, interesting because uh, like, how do you work on the storyboard part and making uh, like the shots? And how do you manage your scene? Do you have some reference from movies, things like that? Yeah, I usually uh, cobble together a bunch of reference material. I just grabbed every every R type, like concept image and like images of the cockpits and stuff that from all the game manuals and things that I could. Um, for the mech film, I I just scoured lots of mecha anime and just like grabbed loads of clips of all the kind of bits that I think would help me. Uh, for storyboards. Um, a lot of that Cinema 4D helps with as well because I just kind of put really basic 3D models in place and that helps me, you know, plan out the shots so I can move my, my camera around. So you can like test I'm... a few things and like uh, having one scene and then you make a different camera angles to see the best one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So that, that really helps, I think. Uh, yeah, maybe we can talk about uh, the Street Fighter run because it's more advanced and we already have uh, some full sequences to see. It's coming along quite nicely. Um, I've got all the voice acting back now, okay. which is nice. So it's, you know, TIE Fighter was um, kind of easy in a way because there was, you know, there wasn't really a story. It was just explosions, no speaking or anything. Whereas this one has, it's the first thing I've done with full voice acting mm -hmm. so I've got to get all the emotions in there I've got to get the character acting and you know the faces have to match up with the um, expressions on the faces and everything so um, so it's an interesting challenge and I'm enjoying it the fighting parts of Street Fighter will be the easiest to do <laughs> it's the really subtle you know I can do someone kicking someone else into a wall but yeah. having like a really subtle kind of two people interacting seems to be a lot harder to do It's coming along quite, quite nicely, actually. Yeah, and, uh, you were talking about uh, working in a, on a production and uh, during the weekend on your project, but now you are a full animator on this project. So, how was the transition? I, I know you use uh, Patreon; people can finance. So, how was the transition from this to this? I was doing commission stuff for YouTube, but obviously the problem is it takes so long especially the style that I'm going for, you know, that kind of really yeah. detailed early 80s, mid 80s kind of style. I was working for Mashed a lot, mm -hmm. but I kind of felt like I was shortchanging them a bit. Like it wasn't my best work that I was giving them because it takes so long and no one in the right mind is going to give me a year and going to keep paying me for a year to do like a three minute film or something. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, I decided to switch to Patreon and, um, 
that's that's going really well actually i mean it, it could be better but it's it's keeping me alive it's um i can't complain and now my now my cat is shouting in the background what's the matter with you <laughs> shush I'm, I'm talking shush <laughs> Uh, yeah, the switch the switch to Patreon was a bit scary because you never know if if anyone's going to be interested in your stuff, if people are going to, you know, like, I mean, getting people to donate their hard-earned cash is always tricky in the first place, but to, you know, keep them, make sure that you keep, you keep giving them stuff that they like so that um, they feel that it's worthwhile donating to you and things, but it is going quite well, and it means that I can just... I can get out of bed, I can animate all day, I can get back into bed, and I can roll out of bed and animate all day the next day. I don't even, I'm animating from home, so I don't even need to take, you know, a couple of hours out to commute to, like, an office or anything. It's just animation all day, every day. I think Patreon is an excellent route. But uh, is it uh, scary, like, to have uh, people paying for you, but you, you don't know if they will pay for a year or just a month, so... Um, Yeah, I think with with Patreon, it is very scary knowing that the numbers go up as well as down. Yeah. So there's always there's always new people coming in each month, and there's always people dropping out each month. So you kind of need need to keep kind of really pushing the please support me on Patreon so I don't starve kind of thing to people because you always need new people coming in. And yeah, it, it is kind of scary. I do sit there sometimes looking at the numbers. And, and noticing that like 10 people have dropped out in the last couple of days I'm like what did I do did I do something yeah. wrong um, that, or did they did their finances change like it's really hard to tell sometimes so you know the best I can do is just keep just keep going and um, and hopefully and here's my cat <laughs> and hopefully give them give them a product that they'll really like at the end something really high quality that they'll be glad that you know they were part of Yeah, because it's not easy, like on YouTube, to have uh, an animation uh, YouTube channel with uh, regular content. It's not easy to do because you you, you yeah. can't see uh, much things except maybe behind the scenes and stuff like that. But how do you manage that? Because I, I, I saw in the comments in your videos, uh, many people in uh, new videos are like, oh, you're not dead. <laughs> that, that, yeah, that kind yeah, of totally. So it's... <laughs> How do you deal with it, like uh, producing content for people to see your work, actually? Um, it is really tricky, actually, yeah. Um, keeping pumping out, like, animation for YouTube, I don't. it just seems to be impossible unless unless you're, you're using, you know, more kind of vector, flash-based stuff. I think it's frame by frame, it's just, it just takes too long. It just takes way too long. And so, um, basically, my, my channel just kind of lies there waiting for a new thing to come out in a, a year or two <laughs> with the occasional update in between. But um, I keep I keep my Twitter really active. Like every month I post like two or three different process showing a shot going from rough lines to inks to colors. And so people know that I'm doing stuff and they can see, hopefully they can see that I'm not dead. And if you're animating all the time, like I am, you always have plenty of stuff to, yeah. to show to people. And to do uh, so, like you do also Twitch and live streams and Like that. Yeah, yeah. I, I live stream a lot of my animation. It, that's that's a bit of a tricky one because um, you're sitting there for six hours um, just coloring a face and how do you keep people interested <laughs> enough to sit down and watch you just like draw a few lines for six hours? It's not... I don't know if it's interesting for people. So yeah, Twitch, Twitch is tricky. <laughs> Twitch is a very tricky one. Yeah, but I think people are just uh, like watching and maybe drawing at the same time so it, it can yeah, be like yeah. eight hours and it's not a problem yeah bring up that crate and form a bear <gasps> hold your fire Wait for a clear target. Here's something something that I'm working on. Um, 
again a bit off more than I could chew it's 144 frames of two people walking <laughs> <laughs> maybe I should you know cut down on this kind of stuff so I've got most of the frames done for for Cami on the left here I still need to do her hair and obviously there'll be you know like blinks and things and um, the mouth movements are going to have to match up to the voice recordings as well but at the moment I'm just uh you know just kind of getting the animation done this guy in the background here who's also walking I need to do my in-betweens for him as you can see he's disappearing <laughs> a lot people seem to have different approaches to doing in-betweens I don't know I just really like the onion skin tool it's just so easy to you know move this head over there and get them both roughly the same. Yeah, so you, you are using the out of pegs to do that? Uh, using the, the what, sorry? The out of pegs from the light table. So you can move the the drawing without moving the actual drawing. Um, no, no, I'm doing it in a really crude way. So this is this is another thing, like I was saying, um, how I'm only using like a fraction of the TV okay. paint. Things and so that's something that I should probably really, really start yeah, doing. Yeah, because if you if you click on the uh, light table at the top, can you see the, the dot just next to the cross uh, at the bottom? Yeah. Oh yeah. You can click yeah. on it. Right. Okay. So now you um, can just move it, and uh, it will move only the the drawing from your in between, without moving the actual picture of it. So you won't have to move it again. Oh. So it's called the out of pegs because on the 2D animation on paper you have the pegs, you know, the little holes in the, on yeah, the paper. Yeah, little holes for... And, yeah, and if you zoom yeah. out you can see the the pegs. Uh, let's, let's have a look. Sorry, sorry yeah, for the... Oh, it, right. Yeah, yeah I see. I so see. it's really emulating the, the paper. <laughs> That's... Yeah, I see, I see. This is another reason I wanted to talk to you so I could actually learn some learn some new skills. <laughs> Clothes aren't really such a problem, but um, there's so many lines. Mm -hmm. They're the things that take take the longest amount of time. Do you add your own style, or do you really refer to the to the models from the game? There's so many different styles. It's changed so much over the years, um, especially now that it's gone into 3D. So the style of the characters has changed quite a lot. So. I refer to the, the character sheets from the 1990s Super Street Fighter 2 game and try and keep it as, as close to that as possible. So yeah, that's no, that's an interesting point though. Like if you're uh, doing a film or an animation or something of some kind of established franchise like, you know, Star Wars or Street Fighter or whatever, it's what style do you go for? Because obviously the, both of them, Street Fighter and, and Star Wars and everything has kind of evolved over the years. So after that you also have a, a clean version and the colors and shadows. So it will, it will come yeah. really later or do you do a shot completely and then go to another shot? Um. Usually I do, yeah. Uh, but because I don't, I don't quite have. I'm still waiting on the voice acting for this one particular shot. Okay. So um, I'm, I'm just kind of doing the basic animation for this, and then going on to um, other things that I do have the voice acting for. Uh, but yeah, so then you know I do, do exactly the same thing with the, with the body down there. I can use that. Yeah, yeah, right. No, I like this. I like this new tool. <laughs> I'm going to be using this. Before I had TV Paint, uh, what I would have to do would be to take these frames into Photoshop, turn one of them red, turn the other one blue, and just do each oh. and every frame in Photoshop. <laughs> so, like, I'd make my own really kind of crude onion skinning tool. Having one in the program is just so nice. It's just save so much time how long are you working on a specific shot like, like this one for example because i know like more complex complex one could be really long but this one how long are you working on it you think i, I think about about a week because it's uh, 144 frames um i'm doing it 18 18 frames per second um seems to be a happy medium for me i'm just one guy so 24 frames per second is kind of a little bit beyond me i've done it for some for some really important shots yeah like i say like a happy medium between between the kind of really choppy 
TV anime, which is like, I don't know, maybe about like 10. So you are working really like one frame, one drawing. I was totally self-taught. So um, a lot of the, you know, industry industry jargon, like um, I didn't even know like what ones and twos or animating on ones even meant until recently, <laughs> until a couple of years ago. So for me, it's always just been, yeah, you, you just draw you draw an entirely new drawing each each frame and um don't really hold them very much and something like this here's here's one from from the r type animation which i've been working on at the moment that'll hold there for quite a few frames with just you know just mouth movements and everything this is more like the old style that i did where it's it was very very staticky and so you're working with uh, dialogue uh, in tv paint with the uh, sound uh... Yeah, yeah, this is the the final voice on the on the track here. And yeah, that's something else which is quite nice. You know, see the peaks in in the um audio track so it's actually easier to lip sync up to it. Do you have this in TV Paint? I've been wondering about this. I've been meaning to explore this. Like do you have some kind of filter where you can put like grain and texture on um, yeah, I use I use the effects quite a lot. Let's uh, if we go over here. So there's there's a final one with all the all merged into one layer. So I wonder if we could uh, if we go into a hundred percent effects stylize. I guess. I mean, there's there's grain. Yeah. There's grain here. We could we could have a look at size. What? Oh. Yeah, you can do that kind of stuff. Yeah. Pudding, please. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that during live streams as well. She's just like constant screeching in the background. It's a collaborator. <laughs> Indeed, yeah. She's uh, she's my producer. She <laughs> makes sure that I, I wake up and get enough work done. <laughs> yeah, I see, I see. Um, let me let me apply that. I mean, I guess you'd really need to get the right balance and everything. Yeah. You have to make some but, tests uh, and, and see what goes the best. Yeah, yeah. Also, I'd better remember to uh, <laughs> to remove this. <laughs> mm hmm. Yeah, I use, I use a lot of these as well. Um, I've noticed you don't get this in anime these days something hits yeah like a, a beam hits and that's it you know but in in the olden days you get like subliminal flash frames like this you, you get a lot of that and um so I, I try and use that as much as i can like instead of just falling and exploding you'll get some something like that you don't really notice it because it's so fast but your brain notices it and it, it makes the explosion or the impact more impactful i guess in TIE Fighter, every time something exploded, it had flash frames. I saw that in, your, in the files. Uh, by the way, uh, feel free to download the files from TIE Fighter. They are for free on uh, tvpaint.com, so you can try them and see uh, how it works. Yes, please go to TV Paint website and have a look. The onion skin tool is just so... I don't know how to describe it. There's, there's certain things in life. There's, there's eating, sleeping, breathing, and the onion skin tool. <laughs> it's just really, really essential. I don't know how I lived without it. Basically, that's that's the kind of thing that I do in TV Paint. All of those individual elements have to be drawn in separately in TV Paint. So it's only the background that's 3D, all the coloring and everything is hand-drawn. And um, I really like, for glow effects, it's really good. It's really good, like, um, for instance, using, get the airbrush up there. Just like the blending layers. Really like the blending layers. Okay, so you made the, the light like this, okay. Yeah, yeah. Especially for explosions. Like they're really it's really useful for explosions. In previous days, back in the back in the bad old days, I'd have to take each frame into Photoshop, add the lighting effects like that. But you know, with all these blending layers you can just do it. Just just with one stroke of the pen. We'll put a, a link to your uh, Twitter and Patreon in the description so people can help you to, to create this because it's uh, 
almost only on on people uh, you are uh, how do you say it yeah you just have to help him to <laughs> to make yeah. animation so yeah. so there is a link just below to to do this <laughs> if you can please please do or you don't have to and i'll just go back to working at mcdonald's so that, that's fine as well <laughs> <laughs> I'll just guilt trip you. Yeah. There. <laughs> so thank you very much for for your time. It was a great interview, and thank you for sharing it with the, the demo and everything. So would you like to say something maybe to the TV Paint users or, or wannabe animators who are watching the video? Um, for for wannabe animators, um, what I would say is that there's literally no better time to start animating than right now. There's more. As I say, when I when I was starting out, we didn't even have the internet, we didn't have laptops or anything. You're you're swimming in free software now, and if you don't know how to do something, it, everything is just like a quick tutorial away on YouTube. There's so many resources and everything, and um, yeah, just just start animating. Just start. You'll be really good in about three years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be really good in about three years. There's. We can put that on a t-shirt yeah, or something. That's it. <laughs> <laughs>